You're watching The Penny Hardaway Show, presented by Cook's Pest Control. In the spirit of the Olympics, Penny Hardaway takes us back to the 1996 games and Dream Team 3. Plus, we meet the walk-ons who have a crucial role on this team. That's coming up on The Penny Hardaway Show. The game is on. The Penny Hardaway Show is presented by Cook's Pest Control. You don't have to live with pests. Call Cook's Pest Control and get a free quote today. Conway Services, the official HVAC partner of Tiger Athletics. Tiger Bookstore, the official merchandiser for Tiger Athletics. AutoZone, when you've got car trouble, you want help from number one. Get in the zone, AutoZone. And is supported by your Memphis area Toyota dealers. This week, it's all about revenge and measurement. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Wilotion. And I'm Cassie Carlson. Let's take a look back at Tulane and the highly anticipated meeting with Houston. First comes the revenge game over Tulane. The Tigers get off to a red hot start with Lester Quinones knocking down the three out of the corner. DeAndre Williams getting a double double after following his own miss. 14 points and a career high 13 boards. Tigers on a 10 2 run as point guard Alex Lomax rings the bell with a three from the corner pocket. Memphis with 10 blocks and five steals in the game. This deal leads to a DeAndre Williams layup as the Tigers get their revenge over Tulane by 11. They go on to win it 80 69 to move to third place in the AAC. Then comes the game of the year at six ranked Houston and DeAndre Williams continuing his hot week, making him our outstanding player of the week. Back in his hometown, showing out, pulling up from mid range. Williams then fires from three, that shot good. He goes off for 13, combining for 27 and 16 on the week. The Tigers start on a 15 to four run. Off a steal, running the floor, and Landers Nolly finds Jalen Duran down low for the slam. Then off the pick and roll, Duran showing even more presence at the rim. Houston comes back to get within four, but with the shot clock winding down, Lester Quinones with a hand in his face, and he drains that deep shot. Memphis down three in the third. Williams throws it up for Duran again, way off the net, but that length so handy. He's there for the dunk. Down one, Quinones with the catch and shoot three, and Connor Glennon's reaction on the bench says it all. Then up two, Landers Nolly from the wing and the Tigers rolling up five. Nolly a game high 20. He's also our defensive player of the week, combining for three steals and three blocks in two games. More out a trap and a steal for Nolly. Memphis goes on a 13-0 run late in the game and takes down Houston 69-59, snapping the Cougars' 37-game home win streak for their second time upsetting the sixth-ranked team this season and getting another quad one win. And everybody better take notice. Memphis's first road win against a top-10 opponent nearly 17 years to the day, February 9th, 2005 when they won at number nine Louisville the last time they pulled this off they end the game on an extraordinary run in light of the Olympics it's time now to hear from Penny Hardaway on that 1996 Dream Team 3. With the Olympics going on now coach makes me think about 1996 Dream Team 3 and Penny Hardaway is there with five of the original Dream Teamers when you first found out you were going to be on that team, give me your first reaction. It was an amazing feeling because it was in our, it was in the United States. It was in Atlanta, which is very close to, to Memphis. And I was like, man, if I'm on that team, I would be close to home. All my relatives would be able to come. It would be an amazing experience. And they picked me for the team. And I, I went crazy. I was excited about that. Is there a different feeling from putting on a Team USA jersey compared to a Magic jersey? Absolutely, because you know you're doing it for your country. The Magic jersey is strictly for the maybe the state of Florida, but obviously the city of Orlando. And when you put on a USA jersey, then you're you're talking about the entire country. Take us back, where, where you were, what you were doing when you got the invite. I was actually in Memphis here, um, probably working out, and then I got the call that I was going to be on the team. And man, that was probably the best workout day I had all that <laughs> summer. <laughs> just, just excited. All the energy, being in Atlanta, the Olympic Village in itself is like a spectacle in itself. What's it like being an athlete in there? You know what, it's, it's, it's phenomenal because I'm a fan of all the sports. 
So to walk around and see the different sports and different athletes and interacting and, and having fun, that was, that was pretty cool. Do you have a favorite part about the Olympics that people might not know that goes on? Well, in the, in the villages, we had like ping pong tables. So there were epic battles with guys like and who? gals. Not everybody. Well, I'll just talk about the basketball team. But Hakeem Olajuwon, <laughs> Reggie Miller, myself, um, we all would get together with, with other sports guys. And, you know, it was pretty cool. I, that had to be amazing. You're playing with Barkley. You're, you're playing with the original Dream Team guys. Pippen's on that team. What were those practices like? Yeah, the practices were very competitive. It got kind of petty at some point because the guys, the little inner rival, yeah, the inner rivalries that Grant Hill and Scottie Pippen had, uh, John Stockton and Gary Payton had. Uh, you can just say myself with any guard because it was just, I was just competitive at that time uh, with those guys. And everybody was trying to show their dominance at their position. And Carl Malone and Charles Barkley every single day. Grant Hill and Scottie Pippen every single day. Akeem Olajuwon and Shaq. Ooh. David Robinson and Shaq. I mean, Ooh. all these different battles, man. It was Mitch Richmond and Reggie Miller. So it was, it was pretty cool. What's it like when you get the best in the U.S. to go up against other countries? Do you see the different styles of play? How does that differ from the NBA? Yeah, we were so dominant at that time. Uh, we felt like that we couldn't be beaten, but that's when the rest of the world was starting to get better. But, uh, you know, the US, USA basketball at that time was just too dominant. But the other countries, they did, they did okay. You blew out everybody in those games. I mean, if I recall correctly, Australia was your semifinal, 101-73. Gold medal game, Yugoslavia, 95-69. How did you guys stay interested? Well, it was just uh, winning that gold medal and, and to make it convincingly, every win to make it convincingly to make the rest of the, I mean, the, rest of the nation uh, understand who we were and the rest of the world understand that they weren't on our level yet. I read that attendance for those games was averaging like 32,000. That's double FedEx Forum. What was that atmosphere? No, like? that was beautiful. You know, you're going into this humongous, like, um, it's like a Georgia dome. It was like huge and it was packed. That was a weird feeling because you never get that many fans, obviously, in a normal basketball game, but we were ready for it. So the, the practices were probably more competitive than the games themselves. And you had a great staff. Coach Wilkins was the head coach. Talk about how he sorted everything out to figure out a rotation. Yeah, the practices were definitely better than the games because it was so competitive, obviously. And everybody came in to, to, to kind of, like I say, show their worth about being picked on, onto that team. And Coach Wilkins just went with a different lineup pretty much every night. No matter who, you could close your eyes and pick any five, and you're going to go out there and, and do a great job. No, especially playing on one of the dream teams, that's for sure. What was it like interacting with some of the international players that had to be looking up to Shaq and to David Robinson and Akeem Olajuwon? Yeah, that was really weird as well because before the games, they were asking for autographs. After the games, they were asking to take pictures because they knew that these guys were their idols, even though they had to, we had to compete against them. It's kind of funny. Watching the Olympics now, I guess, what do you miss about it? And what do you see from Team USA and the young guys and the veterans and, and what you recall? Yeah, I miss the camaraderie because you battled against these guys all year. And then when you're finally, on the, you're finally on the same teams, you're riding the bus, you're at the meals. You see how what kind of character these guys have and how how funny a lot of them are. And, um, you know, it was, it was pretty cool. I, I got really close with uh, Carl Malone because he was a guy that was so competitive and always like straightforward when he competed and uh, got a chance to know a lot of the guys. Now, they almost have like a training camp in Vegas where they bring waves of guys in until they finally find a team. They'll have some original members and then they'll add some more. So it's way, di it's way different now. Coming up, we meet Connor Glennon and Tadarius Jacobs, two walk-ons with a crucial role on this team. You're watching the Penny Hardaway Show, presented by Cook's Pest Control. Penny Hardaway says being a walk-on is an underappreciated role, but for Connor Glennon and Darius Jacobs, it was a chance to fulfill their dreams. Inside Access is presented by Memphis Toyota Dealers. Connor Glennon grew up in a basketball house. His dad a coach and two older siblings he had to keep up with. I had incredible role models, my older brother, my older sister, um, just watching them, seeing what to do and also maybe what I could do better. You know, they're perfect examples of that. And then, you know, like I said, my dad was my coach. So anytime I needed anything or any advice or anything, he was, you know, a couple bedrooms away. What was the number one basketball advice your dad gave you growing up? 
Just work hard and anything that you want to do, leave that up to yourself, you know, don't let anyone else tell you, you know, you can't do it or whatever, just find a way. Do whatever you gotta do, just find a way. That advice came into play when Glennon went through the recruitment process. Without many scholarship offers, he found a way to get his name in front of the right people by writing handwritten letters to 200 college coaches. Those were handwritten letters, hand correct? Those letters. took a long time. Yep. I so study hall every day, 10, 15 minutes before I started my homework. I just cranked out three, four of them and, you know, sent them off that weekend. And, you know, it was the best decision I could ever make. Out of the 200, he only got a few responses. But the message was pretty common. They said, you know, we love what you're doing and, you know, we, we want to help you, but we just don't have the spots available. So this was, in all seriousness, the only school who was like, yeah, we have a spot for you. So hearing that Cody Topper, you know, saw the letter mm -hmm. and wanted to give you a chance and told Penny about you, how did that make you feel? It, it made everything kind of come to fruition, like, the hard work to, you know, create your own path, the things that, you know, when someone says you can't do something, find a way, it just, it, it solidified that. And it, it makes me believe that, you know, going forward, anything I want to do, I can, I can really do if I just, you know, figure out a way. And, um, so, you know, meeting someone like Coach Todd, you never know, you know, 10 years later, you don't know where he's going to be, right? So it, it teaches you a lesson, you know, the people I meet here today, um, 10 years from now, maybe something similar will happen, you know, you never know. Since you've been at Memphis now, how would you describe your experience? Uh, surreal. Uh, every day I get to come in here and uh, put on a jersey for, you know, the one team that gave me a chance. And, you know, that's the feeling, you know, you can't really describe, you know, um, being from Chicago, I came here, I didn't know anybody. I just kind of, you know, I was excited to play. And, you know, I feel like I've built a family here with my teammates and this coaching staff and I'm falling in love with the city. So. Um, it's it's just an amazing feeling to get to come into this building and learn from you know the staff and the players here and the local kids and all that stuff. So it's it's been it's been a lot of fun. Freshman to Darius Jacobs has experience playing for Penny Hardaway, who was a freshman on the 2018 East State Championship team. It was quite the experience. I got to play with a lot of great um, players like James and, and Malco, Elo, playing with them again. So it was a great experience. I got to learn a lot. Um, I didn't play a lot, but it was still the experience. It helped me throughout my whole high school career. After Hardaway took the job at Memphis, Jacobs finished his high school career at Bartlett, but took what he learned from Penny and the East High School team with him. Playing with a like, type of swagger, like you can't be on the court. Being lackadaisical, you gotta always bring some type of energy. So I carried that throughout my high school career. I played hard on defense and made sure I gave maximum effort while I was on the court. What made you choose Memphis as a walk-on? I had um, D3, D2, and Juco recruit me, but I felt like when Penny called my mom and gave me the opportunity to come here, that once again, since I already had it as a coach, it will be an easy transition and I already know what he stands for and just being able to play at this level and see how it is and just play with the players and be with the team, see how the culture is. I feel like it uh, got me as a player going forward. How do you attack your role and your job on this team every day? Because Penny said you could be starting at maybe a smaller D1 school and he even said that there's potential that you could earn a scholarship over your time here at Memphis. So how do you attack every day? Uh, just come in with the mindset of trying to get better each day. Um, just coming in, working hard, um, listening to the staff, trying to improve my game, and also trying to be a good teammate and just trying to round out my game and just be a better person too as well. What's your favorite part about this team and what do you think this team can do this season with the pieces you guys have? I feel like we're becoming more of a family and it's been great. It's been a great um, journey so far and I feel like if we keep, keep it going then we can uh, win a national championship this year. Inside Access is presented by Memphis Toyota Dealers. Every team has them, every team needs them. 
walk-ons. You've got a couple who have uh, really, Connor Glennon's been around two years now. To Darius Jacobs, I see him. I see a guy who could be playing at a smaller school and maybe even starting. Yeah, I'll call those guys the MVPs. They're the MVPs of our team because they don't ever get a chance to play, but they're the most energetic. They practice hard. They do all the drills. They're in there before practice. They're in there after practice, working on their games. And both could really be playing at smaller schools right now, uh, playing basketball, and they chose to come here to play. And that's, that's a beautiful thing to me. Connor Glennon is from Chicago, and there's something that says he wrote letters to more than 200 Division I college coaches to just get a chance to play high-level basketball. Do you remember how you came across his name? Yeah, Cody Topper brought Connor Glennon's name up to me one day and was like, show me some video of him, and was like, you know, he's a little tough player and he wants to be here. And I was like, man, hey, he can come, you know, bring him on. And uh, Cody knew his father, was familiar with his father, so I trusted that. And to get Connor here, Connor's up. Beautiful kid, you know, he's, he's definitely preaching what the coaching staff preaches to the guys. He's almost like a coach on the floor, uh, an extension of us, and uh, definitely love having him here. What do you want from your walk-ons? What's the thing that they have to bring to the table? Well, they, we need energy. You know, we need energy from those guys. They need to understand what our message is and to go out there and just work hard and just lead by example and, and be the standard, and that's what they are. You talk about Tadarius and the fact that he could be starting maybe at a small level, smaller school, but you had him on your team at East as he was just a freshman. What do you remember about young Tadarius on that team? I just remember just looking at him as a freshman and going, man, this kid could be really good. He had, he had all of the intangibles. He played hard. Uh, he, was, he was tough enough. And he just made plays just uncanny, just how he did things. And I was like, wow, he could be pretty good. Two more road games for the Tigers this week. Penny previews Cincinnati and SMU right after this. You're watching the Penny Hardaway Show, presented by Cook's Pest Control. Let's take a look at the AutoZone road ahead. Easy week for you, coach. On the road, you just have to go to SMU and to Cincinnati. Yeah, those are uh, two easy places to play. No, seriously, they are as tough a place as to play in our conference. Really good team. Cincinnati's kind of up and down. SMU's playing beautiful basketball, but it's always great to go on the road to those venues because you know it's going to be wild and crazy. Cincinnati is a rescheduled game. Do you scout them now a third time? No, I kind of keep the same thing. I mean, obviously, they're not going to change much this late in the season. We know exactly what they want to do. We just have to go and take it away. And it seems like your team really takes notice when they know they've lost one. Yeah, well, obviously, those games that we lost, it was without our full roster. And the guys are kind of upset because those teams kind of gloated on us a little bit when they beat us without our full roster. So with our full roster going in there, we'll see how it, how it works out for them. You talk about the mentality you need to go undefeated basically to finish out this regular season. Is that an unspoken mentality or do you have to remind the guys? No, we don't have to remind them. We say every game is 1-0. One, one and oh. That's it. And then we, think we take every game one at a time, but we don't have to talk about it. We already understand what the mission is. That was tonight's AutoZone Road Ahead. AutoZone, America's number one battery destination and official sponsor of Tiger Athletics. Get in the zone, AutoZone. The change in plans have really made this road trip tough. That is for sure. Back in a minute to put a wrap on this edition of The Penny Show. You're watching The Penny Hardaway Show, presented by Cook's Pest Control. Thanks so much for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the Olympics. We'll see you next week. The Penny Hardaway Show is presented by Cook's Pest Control. You don't have to live with pests. Call Cook's Pest Control and get a free quote today. Conway Services, the official HVAC partner of Tiger Athletics. Tiger Bookstore, the official merchandiser for Tiger Athletics. AutoZone, when you've got car trouble, you want help from number one. Get in the zone, AutoZone. And is supported by your Memphis area Toyota dealers. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation of the University of Memphis Sports Network. This copyrighted telecast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Memphis. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the University of Memphis and Learfield.